He's going to meet his brother Esau, and he's made these gigantic mistakes. There's this distance of 14 years. There's a 500-mile distance. And here comes Jacob with his new wife and his new family, new wives, and his new family. And he's heading back to meet with Esau, but Esau's on his way to meet Jacob with 400 men. So it's about to go down, right? So this is where we pick it up in the Bible is Jacob has actually sent all these gifts to Esau to try to, you know, get him to soften his heart so that when Jacob finally sees him, they'll be reunited and everything will be okay. So Jacob sends all these gifts. He sends his family and we're at the Jabbok River. This the Jabbok River actually means to wrestle with God. And so Jacob... Everybody's over on the other side of the river, and Jacob finds himself alone with God. Have you ever been there? Trouble ahead, trouble behind, hard decisions, fear, anticipation, anxiety. Well, what is Esau going to do? Why is he bringing so many people with him? <laughs> This is where we find Jacob. It's in Genesis 32. It says, so Jacob was left alone. I just want to stop there because a lot of times when we're left alone is when our thoughts start to wonder, isn't it? You don't have somebody to bounce them off of. Maybe you're an internal processor. Maybe you're an external processor. But there's a lot of times when you're left alone that your thoughts start to go. Fear starts to creep in. Anxiety starts to creep in about a situation that may be coming up. But Jacob's facing this huge situation in the morning. And so Jacob is left alone. I don't think Jacob gets alone very often. Having two wives, I'm going to dare to say, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Having a bunch of kids, he probably, is, probably isn't alone very often. I had two kids and, you know, like, we weren't alone very often at all. It's always with them. So Jacob's left alone in this season. So on the other side of the river, his entire family's gone. He's left alone, knowing that fear's ahead of him tomorrow morning. And the Bible says that a man wrestled with him till daybreak. So Jacob is left alone. He's on the other side of the Jabbok River. And then a man wrestles with him until daybreak. It's like the weirdest passage in the Bible. It's got to be one of them, right? Like, what are we talking about right now? The man wrestles with Jacob until daybreak. It's nighttime. It's dark. And Jacob's out there. And some guy comes up and just starts wrestling with him. A lot of scholars believe that Jacob probably thought it was Esau, his older brother, who snuck out, got, in, got ahead of his camp, and actually went over to the other side of the river. And I'm going to wrestle this guy. This is my older brother, or my younger brother. He stole things from me. And then a lot of other people believe that he might have thought it was Laban, who the guy he just left. He'd been working there for 14 years. He leaves them. He runs away. Laban is upset with Jacob. So Jacob's wrestling this man until daybreak by himself on the other side of the river knowing that Esau is on the way. How many of you have wrestled before? How many of you have wrestled someone? Okay, cool. You're on my side. You're my team. It's, it's pretty intimate, isn't it? Like, it's, it's hands on. You know? And so this man is wrestling Jacob all night long. As Jacob's mind wants to start to wonder, this man, which is an angel of the Lord, starts to wrestle him. Jacob normally would run. In this season of life, but it's a new Jacob. Everybody's ahead of him. He could totally go out the back door and just go and make a new life for himself. 
But God sends somebody to wrestle with him right in the middle of that. No, you're not going anywhere. You got to stick here. You don't get to run away this time, Jacob. You got to stay around and watch what I can do. And I just want to say it's in these seasons of being alone and wrestling with the Lord that you will discover if you have faith in God. You'll, you'll discover where your faith's at. You know, where your, where your faith is lined up with the Lord. Because it's in that wrestling time where you're not understanding what God is doing and you go, okay, God, I'm going to choose to trust you anyways, even though I don't grasp what you're doing. And especially when you don't agree with what he's doing. And so Jacob's alone wrestling with this angel. He can't go anywhere. He's stuck. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that the, his hip was wrenched and he wrestled as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, Let me go, for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Let you let me go. My job is done here. <laughs> I've kept you around. Let me go. It's daybreak. The, the sun's starting to come up. You're, you're getting ready to go into what God has for you and facing Esau. So let me go. It's daybreak. And Jacob says, no, 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 no. You're not going anywhere unless you bless me. Which I find so... I'm, I'm curious why Jacob needs another blessing. You know, why, why does he need to be blessed one more time? He's already blessed because this is Isaac, his dad, who is actually Abraham's son. And Abraham, the Bible says that Abraham, you will outnumber the stars in the sky and there will be blessing on your family line. That's Abraham's blessing. And then you have Isaac, which is a descendant of Abraham. It's his son. It's his one and only, his firstborn son. So Jacob's already walking in this family heritage of blessing. And then he steals blessing from his brother Esau. And so we have a couple of blessings that Jacob's already had, but it's more, I need more, I need more. I need more blessing. There's a couple points in that. It's like sometimes when you feel really blessed by the Lord, you're like, okay, so I guess that's, I just stop here. And you, oh, I can't really ask God for anything else. Like I kind of just have everything that I could ever want. And God's like, no, like ask me, what's your heart? What's your heart's desire? So I want to do more. But the other part of Jacob is he never was able to really receive that blessing because he deceived people to actually get it. His life was a mess. And so like he really can't be blessed by the Lord, so I need the blessing of this person right in front of me right now. So he says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. The man asked them, then what is your name? And Jacob, he, Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. God changes his name. This is what God is in the business of doing. As you read the Bible, you see all these name changes. And a name change comes when you're at the end of yourself. So Jacob's known as a deceiving, like, heel-grabbing person, like trying to get ahead in the Bible. And so God's like, you're at the end of yourself. You've gotten as far as you can get with that name. Now I'm going to actually hit you with the new name, which is Israel, which means you are God's people. You are the people of the Lord. And so when we come to the end of ourself, when we come to the end of the wrestling, God refines us so much that it actually gives us a brand new life. Uh, look, I, look at what I've done. And now we surrender ourselves over to the Lord and go, man, I can't do anything else. I need you. I need your blessing. And God's like, cool. You're finally at the end of yourself. Now watch what I can do. You're going to be Israel. You're going to be the name of the Lord. You're going to be God's people. This is where we find Jacob is he finally receives this blessing. 
So Jacob says, well, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? And then he blessed them there. In the middle of the struggle, in the middle of coming to the end of himself, in the middle of being alone, in the middle of trouble ahead and trouble behind, in the middle of all of life's circumstances, in the middle of staying up all night and pondering the decisions that you made, in the middle of fear and anxiety, is where God brings the breakthrough. That he actually breaks through in Jacob's life and gives him a brand new name and a brand new identity. You've came to the end of what you can do. Now watch what I can do. And Jacob wakes up the next morning and goes and meets his brother Esau with the 400 men coming. And Esau runs to Jacob. The Bible says that Esau started running at Jacob. And Jacob stood there. He wasn't able to go anywhere. Why? Because his hip was hurt. He couldn't run anymore. He had to embrace what God had right in front of him. The fear of somebody running at you that you've made enemies with. And so Esau runs at him, embraces him, and gives him a kiss on the cheek, and they start to weep together. God brings breakthrough when we come to the end of ourself after we've been wrestling with the Lord on a situation or a circumstance that there's breakthrough in that. 